Well, as you know, tonight's theme is the evolution of Bugs Bunny. And Bugs Bunny did not happen consciously. There are a lot of cartoon characters that were created consciously with the idea of creating uh, a funny cartoon character. What happened? Then you can think of them like there's like Cool Cat, which I just, just saw on television before we came down here. It was the last attempt at creating a cartoon star at Warner Brothers. Well, I got into it by accident. I had a collection of films. People asked to see them. So I started showing them, and I started introducing them, copying the Toronto Film Society and people like that, and people told me they liked the introductions. Some people said they didn't like them, or people said they did, and I happened to like doing them, so I continued doing them. How I got into the cabana room of the Spadina Hotel was an accident, and really had nothing to do with me, except to do with the person, a lot to do with the person who runs the cabana room, which is Jimmy here. I put up with the red. Is civil. He's doing terrific business. The buyer is doing good money. Also, he does good, good money for himself. So naturally, everybody both were happy. That's why I put up, you know, I don't have no problem. Nothing, nothing to complain about it. Then we're right. They had sold Bugs Bunny to TV and thought, well, we can't make any more Bugs Bunny cartoons because we've got the Bugs Bunny TV show. Why they thought that, I don't know, but they thought that. And somebody came up with Cool Cat, and, and Cool Cat was about the uncoolest thing they ever did. And then you can look at television, you can think of, well, like Moby Grape, and the, you know, like all those things. There's this one guy that, that was a producer at NBC, and he called up, I think it was Hanna-Barbera, and he said, I have a great idea for a cartoon series. I said, what? He said, Moby Grape. I said, what's that? He said, it's a purple whale. Well, he had the money, and they made a year's worth of these things, and the kids turned the dial to eight. <coughs> they, 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 they did not set out to create Bugs Bunny. And anyone who tells you that is, is not telling you the truth. Now, what's interesting, you know, you, you, I sometimes go off into left field here and start talking about things like the I Ching or the Bible. On this night, something unexpected happened. One man grew impatient, complaining that he wanted to see the films. They argued, and Reg left the stage demanding an apology. They met at the back of the room, near the door, where Reg suddenly shoved the man out. Everyone else was bewildered. And I'll tell you something. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about the knowledge. I don't give a shit about the money. I don't give a shit about anything. Now, you want to get up and walk out? Go. You want to say he's crazy? Go ahead and say it. Because I am going in the farthest direction from that happening as I can fucking well go. And if I've gotten just a little bit too goddamn heavy for you, you can't handle it? Well, fuck you, because I'll tell you something. Life is a goddamn steamroller. You don't have the fucking choice. I haven't got the goddamn choice. It just comes down the goddamn road and says, I'm coming over you, and that's it. And you don't have a choice. You got the idea in this country, this side of the world, we got a choice. We haven't got a fucking choice. We got no goddamn choice. And the quicker you realize that, the more you got a choice, because then you can figure out how the fuck you're going to survive, which is what this rabbit is all about. Survival. You're going to stew me? Okay, stew me. But you make the move. That's Bugs. Total, at the center of the storm, calm. Does he hurt people? Does he move out to hurt people? No. But what happens when they move in to hurt him? World War III. And who wins? Because he keeps a sense of humor. Okay, how did I get involved with Reg Hart? It's, uh, how'd you guys get involved with Reg Hart? He's a pretty unique person. There's not a lot of people doing this kind of thing in Toronto, so obviously people are attracted to what is unique and what is vibrant, what is alive. He's obviously unique, and not, who else would kick his whole audience out, you know, for the sake of his own principles, for the sake of his own well-being. It's for his own head that he does everything like that. I guess I'm, I work with Reg Hart because, uh, 
I see a lot in him that I uh, that is in myself. You know, I play in a punk band. He's a punk. <laughs>